Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I want to show all of you how to set up a startup file inside of Blender. So the reason you would do this is so that when you create a new project in Blender, that there's going to be a certain set of preset things, such as the position of where everything is at, what tab up here you decide to start on, and if you want any default materials uh, built into your default mesh, or if you want to change what the default mesh is away from the default cubes. Those are just some examples of what you can do with a startup file. So if I go back to a random window, hit control new, and I start up a new general file, don't save, we're going to see that that scene I just had a second ago loaded. And this is obviously a little bit different than the default Blender scene, because first off, we're on the shading tab, and secondly, it already has a texture applied to the default cube. And we can see that attached as image texture right here in the node graph on the shading tab. So first I'm going to reset everything back to the factory defaults for Blender. I'm going to do that by going up to file down here in defaults and we'll do load factory settings. So this resets everything back to the default Blender presets. And when you have changes made and you want to save those changes as the new default for any new project, you would do save startup file. So let's go in here, load factory settings, confirm it, and we should see the basic Blender cube right here. If we go to the shading tab, we can see we just have a default material here. There's no image texture attached. So now we can take these defaults and change them in any way we want. So for instance, you might want to not start every Blender project with a cube. So I can hit tab to go out of edit mode, select the cube, hit X to delete it, confirm the deletion. And now let's add in a new object. So I'll hit shift A. Let's go with the Blender monkey here. So now we have a different object in our scene. If we want to save everything that we have currently, including the camera angle, what lights are in the scene, the object, then we just go up to file, defaults, save, startup file. So let me go over to a different tab now. And then when I hit control N and do a new file, don't save this one. We'll see now that Blender loads by default with uh, the monkey head. And also you can see that the angle, which we're looking at that view is different than the original as well. If I zoom all the way out here, I can save it one more time. Let's create a new file. Let's, uh, Zoom out even more, start a new file, and then we can see we're back to that angle looking at the uh, monkey head. So pretty much all of the options you have about the interface can be customized for your startup file. So for instance, up here in the top right, instead of looking at the monkey in solid display mode, we can change to material preview. And then we can click on this drop down down here and select a HDRI built into Blender. So let's go ahead and select that and you can and we can see that lights up the object a bit differently. So now we can go file uh, defaults, save startup file, go ahead and do that. And once again, those default changes we made are going to stay the same. Likewise, if I go to a different tab, like let's say the texture paint tab, we decide for some reason we don't like these default windows. We can change all of them. So I'll just change these to some that don't really make a lot of sense, just to demonstrate. And now let's go up to file, defaults, save, startup file. One thing to note is that it will always load the Blender projects, the new projects into the tab, which you saved the startup file to. So now instead of loading up the project to the layout tab, it's going to load into texture paint. So I can demonstrate that control N to new. Let's don't save this. And look at that. We're in the texture paint tab, uh, technically speaking, although our windows are a bunch of nonsense here. So when you get to this point, you might want to just reset back to the defaults and try again. Another thing you could do, though, is you can actually save a Blender project as just some default that you want to load up later on. So here I have a file called startup file test. That's what we saw at the beginning of the video. I can just open recent or open that file directly. And you can see that's what we were showing at the start. So because we loaded up this file and all of the windows were set up theoretically the way we wanted to uh, have them, you can see the texture paint is actually texture paint there, then we could just take this file and save it as the startup file. So if we go to file, new, save startup file, we can confirm that. And now if we control new and don't save, we're going to have that exact same file. So you can just save a separate copy of what you might want as a preset for your startup files, and then just save that in the file menu whenever you actually want that to start up every time you load Blender.
So one more thing I want to show is that if you happen to be bringing in a image texture for your startup file, uh, you may want to be a little bit careful about where you choose to store that image on your computer. So it's going to try to reference the location. So obviously, if you're going to be doing this, it should be an image location that you're not going to move. And secondly, in my experience, if you put the image in your user profile, so if you're talking Windows, that would be C drive users, your username, and then pictures, video, wherever, uh, then it tends to lose reference to the image when you actually start a new project. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate that right now. If I go to the shading tab here, and we take this default principled BSDF shader and add an image texture to it. So I'm going to shift A and then search image. And then we have image texture. I'm going to feed this into the base color. So basically, a image is going to determine what it shows here in terms of the colors. Uh, let's hit open. And I'm going to use a location on my desktop. So you can see this is C Drive Users Chris Desktop. So here I'm going to grab the stained glass image we saw at the start of the video, right? Um, so it loads up there just fine. Now let's go to File, Defaults, Save Startup File. Okay, so it's saved. Now we hit Control N, General, Don't Save, and it's pink. So we can see that the material is still there. Uh, the nodes for the stained glass it has the same name as the file on our desktop, but it just doesn't load in properly. So instead of having it stored there in the desktop or pictures folder of your user profile, you could store it somewhere else on the hard drive. Okay, so this time I'm going to open an image and it's going to be inside of my Blender folder. So we can see this is D drive slash Blender. It's totally public on the computer. So you can see that the root directories for this is D drive blender. So it's pretty much accessible under any user profile on the computer. And I think I have it in practice. And here we have the same stained glass file. So I'll double click, load this in here. So you can see here, it's totally identical. So if we go to file, defaults, save startup file, save it. But this time we do control N, new file, don't save. We can see that the image actually still stays loaded in properly. Uh, so if you're picking a location for your image textures, I would keep it somewhere that's never going to change so that it doesn't lose the reference to it. And then secondly, make sure that it's somewhere outside of your user profile so that Blender can go ahead and load it in when you start a new project properly. So the last thing I want to point out about startup files is that Blender preferences are independent of your startup file. So if I go to edit preferences and I change some values like an animation, minimum grid spacing, I'll just set this to 30. It defaults to 45 pixels or in add-ons, I decide to enable a couple add-ons. Then I close this and we go to file, new, general, inside of edit preferences, those same add-ons we enabled and the setting changes we made on the animation tab and any of these other tabs are going to be the same, even though we started a new project and we didn't actually save a new startup file. So likewise, if I change this to 45 and let's disable these, right? Then we go file, defaults, save startup file. Then now I go to edit preferences after saving the startup file and let's just enable a few different ones. And we go to file new. They're still going to be there because the preferences are independent of your startup file. So your startup file is basically going to control how your interface looks, what objects, lights, cameras, etc., are going to show up in your default scene, what tab you're going to be starting on, uh, how your default materials are going to be set up, including the node graph and references to images. Once again, be careful about uh, having your images stored on your user profile because it may not link properly when you start a new file. And of course, if you want to change your starting mesh by doing something like selecting it, X to delete, confirm it, shift A to add, and then add a monkey in. Then we save that as the startup file. Then that is super easy to do. So there's obviously a lot you can customize about how Blender is going to be every time you start up a project. And if you ever want to go back to the defaults, then you can just do file, defaults, load factory settings, uh, but one little caveat, if you do load the factory default settings, it does reset your preferences as well. So if we go in here to the add-ons, uh, you can see searching here for AUT. I usually have auto mirror enabled as a plugin, but if you reset 
But if you reset Blender to the factory defaults by going to File, Defaults, Load Factory Settings, then we can see that uh, that plugin is going to be disabled again. So yeah, be a little careful about that. And of course, we can see the other settings are defaulted as well. But in a nutshell, that's pretty much going to be it about setting up a startup file, what customizations you can make to it, and how plugins and Blender preferences are a separate deal from your startup file. So I've been Chris. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys got something out of this video, and I will see all of you in my future video content.